forecast for Saturday, May 4th. So first of all, let me get the cheese out of the way and just let me say, may the 4th be with you. I just cannot let that particular date go by without saying that. What is my issue? For all of you Star Wars fans out there, I'm sure you have the same kind of impulse. And it's kind of funny because I've actually never watched Star Wars, but may the 4th be with you. Okay, so the moon is still in Pisces energy. We are wrapping things up here. We are healing. We are transforming. We are inspiring. And of course, we are preparing for a major shift in a brand new direction, which of course is going to become a little bit more clear when the moon shifts into Aries energy. So of course, we have the moon in Pisces going void, of course at 3.07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into that Aries energy at 4.41 p.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So the shift out of Pisces energy into Aries energy is always a welcomed one. We move out of the depths of our feels. We move out of the depths of our soul self where the healing, the changing, the transformation needs to happen. The Aries energy, we rip that rear view mirror off the car. We don't want to look back. We don't want to process. Instead, we want to look forward. We want to inspire. We want to excite. We want to initiate. We want to jump into something new. And we are definitely going to feel that energy shift, especially in our physical form, as the moon shifts into that Aries energy. So besides that, we have eight different aspects taking place here today. All eight of them are going to involve the moon, which means that this is a moon day. We are really tapping into our emotional realm, into our energetic realm. We are trying to get in alignment. We are closing doors before opening up new ones. And we are definitely going to have some revelations pop off on what it is that we're moving away from and what it is now that we have a desire to move closer to. We kick the day off with the moon in Pisces, making a little bit of a tough aspect with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who's currently in her rulership in this Taurus energy, not only becoming more present, more familiar, more comfortable in our physical form, in our physical environment, but we're starting to really realize what it is that needs to stay, needs to go in our physical lives in order for us to kind of build a realm of reality that not only looks good, but that feels good as well. Of course, this is a semi-square, so this isn't going to feel good. We are triggering some emotions, if you will, especially in our relationship dynamics, especially where our finances are concerned, where we have to kind of feel overwhelmed. We have to feel, let's call it uncomfortable, unfamiliar with this particular situation and circumstance. We are becoming illuminated on what it is that we're no longer in alignment with, who it is that we're no longer in alignment with, and therefore, we're coming up with some realizations with what it is that we have to move away from. And of course, it doesn't feel good. We're overwhelmed. We're overstimulated. We're over emotional, if you will. We're kind of feeling trapped in certain situations and circumstances. But we're realizing by realizing what we don't want, what it is that we actually do want. So you ask for clarity. This is how we get it. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy, which is a beautiful thing, especially coming out of that tough tension point between the moon and Venus. Why do I say that, you may ask? Well, it's because the earlier interaction is illuminating relationship dynamics, circumstances, situations that the old version of self had created. The new version of self, who we're currently anchoring in and getting more comfortable and familiar with, is recognizing that we don't want those particular aspects in our lives anymore. We don't want that individual in our lives anymore. We don't want to pursue that path anymore. We don't want to have these experiences anymore. And from that, again, using the framework of what it is that we don't want, we're building an idea of what we do want. This is majorly pivotal, seeing as we are building towards a new moon in Taurus energy, which is the starting point of initiating a brand new chapter. And because Chiron is involved, and this is a positive aspect, not only are we realizing where it is that we've grown, where it is that we've evolved, where it is that we've made major changes and transformations within ourselves, but we're actually 
very feeling, very confident, very anchored in, very, let's call it optimistic with what it is that this new version of self now wants us to do, now wants us to pursue. This is really us seeing this new version of self from a very positive lens, a very, very, I'm going to call it confident perspective. We are starting to put the pieces together. We're starting to feel stronger within ourselves. And this is not only allowing us to release some of those heavier fragmented energies that the old version of self has still kind of kept attachments to, but we're also realizing what it is now that we're excited and inspired to do and pursue. The moon is then going to sextile first Uranus, second Jupiter. And of course, Uranus and Jupiter still both very much in this Taurus energy, still very much within orb of each other from their great conjunction there on April 20th. And so the interaction first and foremost with Uranus, the great awakener, is shocking us. It's opening us up to new ideas. It's downloading us with aha moments and epiphanies on what we want to do to change our physical environment, where it is that we want to adopt new routines, new methods, new ways of going about life, where it is that we're having a different perspective shift on what it is now that we want to start building, we want to start creating, we actually want to bring to life. The interaction with Jupiter that follows shortly thereafter is optimistic, it's confident, it's showing us where it is that we're building in our self-esteem and our confidence to actually pursue a new option, a new opportunity, especially where we've been sitting in our comfort zone and now we have to kind of bust out of the comfort zone in order to experience situations and circumstances that could actually yield different results in our lives. Although, you know, that Taurus energy is a fixed earth energy and we're very comfortable sitting in the realm, the reality that we've created, we've just had too many good ideas, too many sparks, too many revelations on where it is that we're growing bored, we're growing stagnant, and therefore we want to add some spice to our life. And therefore we have to abandon our comfort zone to see what is alive and well on the other side of the fence, so to speak. We have to go out and explore. And because we have learned some very tough love life lessons in the past, we have the wisdom, the knowledge to integrate in this present moment so that we're not tripping ourselves up and making the same fumbles, the same mistakes as we tried to do in earlier situations when creating a different option, different opportunity in our physical realms. The moon in Pisces energy then going to come up team up with, bump into Neptune, who of course is in his rulership in this Pisces energy at the 29th critical crisis degree, which of course is bringing up all the feels. So as you know, a conjunction is just as much an ending as it is a beginning. And the ending part is kind of unloading a lot of this emotional baggage, a lot of the old ideas, a lot of the old belief systems, a lot of the old, let's just call it soul contracts, karmic contracts, before we jump into something new. Now, the beginning energy that we have to kind of tap into here is that we have new ideas, new inspirations. We are motivated and excited to jump into something new, to build, to create something new. We are being kind of emotionally and spiritually refreshed with this particular energy. This is like a rejuvenating energy putting some pep back in our step, making us a lot more hopeful and wishful than we have been in the previous days, setting us up to basically get in alignment so that our heart and our head can be on the same page and we can engage the physical body to take action and to make moves, which of course we are going to be gifted the opportunity to do as we enter into this new moon in Taurus energy. It's at this point, 3.07 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, and we get a little bit emotional in this Pisces energy. Now, just a heads up, if you were feeling all the good vibes from that moon conjunction with Neptune, then when the moon goes void, you're probably going to start speaking fear and doubt and insecurity into the vision, the gold, the dreams that you were quite excited about. And alternatively, if you tapped into the heavier energies 
and was more about the release and the endings and the closure and the grief and the sadness and the healing that we had to go through in order to start a new chapter, then while the moon is void, you're actually going to start seeing the fragmented energies be put back together and prepare you for a state of wholeness. Now, as the moon is void, of course, in this Pisces energy, we are going to see the moon in Pisces semi-square creating tension and conflict with the sun in Taurus energy. And so there's always a new aha moment, a new emotional awareness on our wants, needs, and desires when the moon and the sun come together. And because this is a semi-square creating tension and conflict, this is a little bit of a growing pain. We know that we have to let go of the old. We know we have to kind of detach from a lot of the things that we're no longer in alignment with. That's that moon and Pisces energy. The sun shining a bright light in Taurus energy is what we have to kind of stabilize in first and foremost before we start building and creating new aspects that are going to fill the void and fill up the space of the things that we're no longer kind of inspired to pursue. 4.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into Aries energy. Again, pep in our step, warrior type of attitude, ants in our pants in all the best kinds of ways. The moon is going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, currently retrograde in this Aquarius energy. And this is going to bring on a lot of intense emotions. We are getting focused, concentrated, tunnel vision on what we have to build, what we have to create, what we have to initiate. We've been waiting for the green light go. So this is major change, major transformation, not only in our inner realm of emotions, but in our mind space, in our physical energy as well. This is hyping us up, really cultivating that fire, that spark, that flame inside of us because a major change, a major transformation is just about to happen. You want to talk about breakthrough energy? This is going to be the week, especially as we walk through this new moon Taurus energy. This is going to be the week where we start to see a lot of the changes and transformations actually materialize in our physical realm. The last thing that we have going on here today, which is a very powerful thing, the moon in this Aries energy going to come up to bump into team up with Mars. Mars, of course, the ruler over this Aries energy in his placement of power in this Aries energy. Again, a conjunction is just as much an ending as it is a beginning. The ending is us realizing where it is that we've been stalled out, where we've been held back, where we've been restricted in being able to actually initiate something new, jump into a new chapter, take action and make moves. That agitation, that frustration, even that anger is definitely going to peak in order for us to let it go. Instead of letting it go, here's a helpful thought, if you find yourself in this intense energy of agitation, frustration, and anger, flip the switch in your brain and start using that to actually make moves, to actually be productive, to use that energy to make the changes and transformations that you've been hesitant and resistant to make. The anger, frustration, and anger isn't a bad energy. If you use it for good, if you sit around and let it destroy you and project that frustration out on the world around you, then yeah, you're just, you're, you're tapping into dark force energies that aren't going to help you at all. But sometimes anger and frustration can be the best kind of fuel to keep that fire lit in your inner realm to actually see things through. The beginning energy of this conjunction is the fact that this is essentially the emotional ignition that we need the inspiration, the excitement, the green light go ahead to get our asses in gear. Okay, our heart and our head are on the same page. Now we got to engage the physical body to be systematic and methodical in the actions in which we're going to take to jump into something new, to initiate a brand new chapter. Again, Mars just kicked off his two year hero journey. We are building in boldness and bravery and courage to do all the things that we have to do in order to break away from the old form, the old version of self and start initializing this brand new chapter, this brand new creator energy, this brand new, I'm going to call it opportunity to level up in some big ways in the physical realm. And so this is just the green light go ahead, even though it probably is going to look more red just because, you know, Mars and Aries energy is fire. Um, but we're going to feel that fire building and we're going to 100% feel the energy supporting us 
to push us forward, to make moves, to jump into something new, to actually get this party started.